Wednesday night, October 25th, 2020. <clears throat> Starting to sign on now. Uh, thankful to be here on Wednesday night. I said it's October 25th, 2020. I'm grateful for that. So we're going to give just a few minutes. <clears throat> Hopefully, some of my friends will have time to join in with us here for a little bit here on 6:30 Wednesday night live. Hey, Miss Sandy, good to see you checking in tonight. I hope you, and Mr. Bruce, are doing well, and our good friend Biscuit. Hope, hope our friend Biscuit's doing good. I know. You're keeping you a lot of company there, so we're grateful for you. Thank y'all for checking in uh, this evening. We're going to give just a few minutes. There's Miss Sarah Height. Good to see you, Miss Sarah. I hope you and John are doing well this Wednesday evening. Thank y'all for being faithful to check in as always. Uh, thankful for every person who has time to check in with us here on Wednesday night. So we're going to take a few minutes and uh, give uh, time for others who may be preparing to sign on to do so and maybe getting a notification <clears throat> that we are on live so we want to <clears throat> give for that and while we're doing so uh, each time we always want to offer uh, the opportunity for you to share any prayer requests or praise reports that you have from the week I hope that uh, one you see the Lord working in mighty ways and even in ways that are unseen to us now we're trusting that he is working and that if you have prayer requests that you would feel at liberty to share those so we could join you in asking the Lord to help you during uh, this time. Uh, getting dark much earlier and next week it's going to sure enough be getting dark earlier. Uh, that's probably one of the hardest things about I spent 18 years on Eastern time and I you know didn't have five o'clock darkness in the winter but I had to get reaccustomed to that. That's probably one of the hardest things during uh, November, December, January and February those real early sunsets and uh, darkness sets in so do remember that clocks do go back Saturday night so you set that clock back so you'll be on time for worship on Sunday I will mention while we're talking about prayer requests I hope you pray uh, for our friends and you know further south than us right now begin to experience the uh, effects of Hurricane Zeta and you can imagine that we're going oh, had so many five hurricanes this season have impacted directly the coast of Louisiana uh, so pray for our friends there and I know some of you have friends and family members in that area and of course coming up through Mississippi and into our area overnight I hope that you are prepared and not only that you're praying for the Lord to, uh, to take care of those things as I know that he will uh, but should you or anyone experience any difficulties or any problems please feel free to reach out to us so we can uh, help you with that because we know there's always a possibility of you know power outages is one thing and none of us like that but we also know that there's a lots of possibility for dangerous situations so do pray for that pray for everybody in the path schools are delayed three hours in the morning and we're grateful uh, for give time for the storm to pass and hopefully won't be a lot of power outages and things can carry on Lord knows we need some normalcy in some areas of our life this year so do pray for that pray for those who will be uh, you know traveling and getting on school buses and things even three hours later do pray for that situation uh, so much I will mention to you Sunday school lessons are up I know we don't have a student ministry uh, less this week but we do have our children ministry and for our adults so please check those out our new uh, shipment of Sunday school materials have arrived and we'll be getting those uh, ready and be letting you know when they're available to pick up for the next quarter uh, which we've still got a little bit of time so there's no real worry on that got a few weeks but just letting you know that those will be available um, <clears throat> Operation Christmas Child is that drive of course is underway well now we just saw schools are closed Thursday thank you Miss Cindy I see there must have been an updated that and I have not heard that yet so thank you for sharing with us uh, now, so no three-hour delay. Looks like schools are going to be closed for what Miss Cindy shared with us. So thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, Operation Christmas Child, like I said, is well underway. I hope you've gotten your boxes and uh, getting them filled up, ready to return them uh, between now and November 8th, so we can have a time of dedication of those boxes on, on November 8th. 
and uh, if you will please be getting those together you can bring them in at any time you can drop them off during the week when the office is open from 8 to 3 Monday through Thursday or you can also bring them in any worship service we'd be glad to take them and have them ready for dedication day as I always say to our church and y'all hear me say this and I know sometimes people say I mean we know we know we know but we have to continue to communicate the purpose behind what we do not just that we're filling a box and giving a gift which is wonderful and nothing wrong with that but there's a greater purpose and the purpose is we're giving more than just gifts we're giving the gospel uh, we're being the hands and feet of Jesus by demonstrating what it means to give gifts because Jesus is the greatest gift the world has ever received and on top of that we're uh, presenting the gospel because each child will receive uh, gospel literature tracts and, and, and booklets and things of that nature in their language that tell them the story of Jesus and the cross and the resurrection so you're making an investment far beyond just the cars or baby dolls and coloring books or anything you might put in your box you're making an investment for eternity so let's get those boxes filled up pick those up anytime and have them back by November 8th and let's just trust God to do something great with those boxes okay don't forget that at all November 4th that's a week from tonight a very important night for our student ministry we're really looking to you know reboot those things and we're having to do a lot of reboot across the board because you know we have been dealing with uh, something that we never saw coming and the effects are lingering and not only lingering are still very much a serious situation but we're having to learn to live not just with it but to be faithful through it and in that we have students who deeply need the Lord uh, they deeply need each other and they deep, deeply need leadership of godly people so on November 4th we're having a student ministry kickoff or reboot if you will we're calling it frontline student ministry because we need students who are willing to be frontline soldiers and not background spectators so we're looking for God to do something great in their lives we're, in, we're encouraging you as parents to get your students there parents maybe you'd like to volunteer to serve in that area uh, and for that night there's going to be food there's going to be worship music there's going to be uh, speaking of the, sharing the gospel so there's going to be a great time it's an outdoor event we're setting up trailers out there in the parking lot as a stage we're trying to do as much as we can and we pray that you know we got good weather that'd be a important prayer request but we're excited about the opportunity to have this event on November 4th and we're grateful to God for that now on Sunday Lord willing we're going to be able to make an announcement about reopening our adult um, uh, prayer meeting and Bible study on Wednesday night so we'll be talking about that on Sunday we're still working out some things trying to make sure we've got things where they need to be because as the students get rebooted and get our adults and then we'll be looking of course for our children too so we're looking to work on those things the rest of this week and hopefully by Sunday be able to make further announcements about that uh, I, I wish all of this would have been over in two or three weeks but it hasn't been so we've been asking the Lord to just help guide our steps so Wednesday night is very important many of you have shared with me and you know my heart sometimes it just kind of helps you get on through the week sometimes you need that uh, fellowship and encouragement from others so we're looking for the Lord to help us and guide us in that okay then finally, don't let me forget to encourage you to get your copy of this year's Thomas Nelson uh, devotional. Do remember, all proceeds after the bill for the books are paid go 100% to the hearts right next door, helping every area resident to succeed, the hearts, the acrostics for. And uh, they have a special program directly funded for families who are dealing with cancer in their family and are helping their loved ones get to and from treatments for medications for help with anything that may be uh where they may have a trouble or trial due to what cancer has brought in their family i am deeply grateful for that ministry i'm deeply grateful for robbie and cindy and all her team that pulled that together but i'm so blessed to see how families and you you should hear the testimonies that we have heard so i'm telling you uh, it's a great opportunity to invest in others and also helps you get in the Word, stay in the Word, day after day, week after week. 52 weeks of devotions of, of 50 trusted pastors, so I encourage you to do that. And I'm so grateful it's my fourth year to be able to be a part of this project, and I'm humbled beyond measure to tell you that God would allow me to do that. And I, I look at the list, and I just feel like a, 
a real small dog in a race of greyhounds, but you know what? I'm grateful that God uses us wherever we are. Uh, if we just submit ourselves completely to his lordship for his purpose, he'll do that. So pick those up. They're $15 each. And like I said, 100% after the bill's paid goes directly to uh, heart. So don't forget that. They're going to be working not only in assisting families with cancer, which this supports, but they do so many other things that's just a blessing to me. And I'm grateful for them. And I know you are too. Okay. So tonight from the Word, I'm going to share with you from one of the devotions, and it's not one that I wrote, but it's one uh, that uh, a friend of mine that I know is an acquaintance, I don't know him personally, but I've met him on a couple of uh, times, uh, pastor up at Peavine Baptist Church um, um, in uh, Rock Springs, Georgia, which is uh, just south of Chattanooga and just north of Lafayette up in that area. Uh, Joel Sutherland has been a tremendous pastor. He was in the Dalton area when I was pastoring in Rome. And uh, he's also worked for the North American Mission Board and just has a great heart for the gospel and evangelism and has done a tremendous job there where he is now up there at uh, Peavine Baptist Church. But I wanted to share one of his devotions with you tonight because it really uh, spoke to my heart as I read it earlier today because uh, this is something we all need. The title of his devotion that he wrote is Week 25 in this new devotion book, and the title is Inspection Time. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says these words, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Let me read that again. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. See, this proverb, here's what Brother Sutherland says, is a picture of the Lord searching our hearts. But it goes beyond that. It's an illustration of someone carrying a lamp from corner to corner in a house searching. You know, with the possibility of power outages, we know what it's like to wake up in the dark. And you wake up in the dark and it's hard to see, and you search for a candle or a flashlight, and you're looking around from corner to corner. And that's the picture here in Proverbs. Uh, he said this, he says, We have no indication of what he or she is searching for, but the person is looking intently. And when we apply the illustration to the spiritual realm, the meaning becomes very clear. God takes the light of the Holy Spirit, the lamp of the Lord, and goes searching from room to room in our lives. The verse says the word heart, but in reality, the word implies the chambers of one's house. So this is good stuff. He said it's more than just your heart. The Holy Spirit searches the innermost parts of our being. He looks in every room and in every crevice and in every corner. Well, that's amazing. He said the Spirit of God searches our lives for things that are in the dark, things that aren't pleasing to God, so he can shed light on them. He wants to point them out to us, and he wants us to see what we may have overlooked in our walk with Christ. You see, sometimes it's not just what you do that dishonors God. There could be some things that we don't do that he wants us to do. We overlook them. We get busy. We get caught up in a lot of things, and we overlook those important things. He says, opening our lives to God's inspection takes courage. Oh, that's true. He says, of course, he doesn't need our permission. We understand that. He doesn't need us to say, okay, Lord, you can search me now. He, he can do whatever he chooses. He says, but when we submit to God, we open ourselves to real progress. Now, I want you to think about some of these things just for a minute. That's why I want to encourage you about getting those books and giving them as gifts and reading through them yourself because you need good Christian material in your hands that you can read that the words will go through your head and into your heart and it will impact your life because if not, then we open ourselves to so many other voices that may not be pointing us uh, to the way we need to go. So how about us? Think about that. The Spirit of God searches our lives for things that are in the dark, things that aren't pleasing to God. Let, let's stop for a minute and ask ourselves this question. What could be in your life or mine that only you or I 
could see beyond God because he sees everything, what could it be in our life that God would say, no, that's just not pleasing? And we know what he does. He sheds light on them. And when he sheds light on them, we've got to do something about it. We can't just overlook it. We can't just ignore it. He points out to us what's wrong. Remember on Sunday when I was talking to you from 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul told Timothy to rebuke and reprove and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, Timothy, you got to point out error, which is rebuke. You've got to reprove, which is not just pointing out error, but it's pointing out error with the intent to correct the behavior. Now, that's what the Lord wants to do. He's not just saying to you, you're wrong, go figure it out. No, he'll walk through those dark places with you, and we all need that, and we need to know that he's there. Sometimes Satan tempts our heart to forget, but his word is faithful, and the Spirit of God is faithful to remind us. Sometimes we just overlook some stuff, as I said. We get so busy in this world. And boy, this year, I've talked about this for many years in my ministry, about the background noise of the world, often drowning out that voice of God speaking into our souls. And if there's ever been a year of background noise, this is it. This is the noisiest year of my life, personally. I've had to deal a lot with background noise. You know, there's a lot. Why don't you do this? We'll do this, do that. There's a lot of lot of that. I mean, it's not just for uh, when it comes to government. It's not just in dealing with our vocations. It's not just dealing with our, our children in schools. It's made its way to the church and everywhere else. And, and people are really struggling with the background noise. And I have to be honest, it's something that I struggle with too because I'm just as human as anybody I'm talking to. But how about us? What does God see when he searches our heart? Let's just think for a minute. You know, does he find some fear? Does he find uh, the presence of worry? Does he find anxiety and weariness? Does he find uncertainty, a lack of faith, or does he find uh, the deadly disease of unforgiveness? Whatever it is that he finds, I want you to be take comfort in this. If he finds worry, he's there to help you with it. If he finds fear, he's there to help you. If he finds anxiety or, or weariness, if he finds even unforgiveness, he's there to help you. You know, it's important for me to be reminded of this, and it's important for you because... When I look around me, I don't find a whole lot to bring comfort. When I look within, I find nothing in and of myself that can fix anything. But it's when I don't keep my eyes on the Lord is when I struggle. Now, I'm not talking about taking my eyes off the Lord and falling into some grievous sin. I'm just saying times when I overlook when he wants to speak to me. So many times lately, God has spoken through this difficult time in ways like I've never experienced before. And I believe he's going to be faithful to do that. So moving forward, I just want to encourage you uh, to stay true to the word. Let the Lord do his perfect work of inspection that we read about in Proverbs chapter 20. Uh, read what David said in Psalm 139. He said, search me, O God, and know me, and try my heart. If there's any wicked way in me, get it out. I believe David meant it because he was a man who pursued the heart of God. You know, that's what I want to do, and I believe you do too. We've talked many times, sometimes people may forget how you live, but they'll never forget how you leave. And we want to leave faithful to the finish. So I want you to think about those things as we prepare for worship this Lord's Day. God has much to say to us. He's speaking much into my heart that I look forward to sharing with you on this Lord's Day. I look forward to seeing God do great things. Worship is at 9 a.m. and 10.30 uh, in person or online. All services will be uh, broadcast both ways. We would love for you to be there if you possibly can. I know there's a lot of, th lot of fear. I know there's a lot of uncertainty. And I can't take that away. But only the Lord can help us through that. 9 a.m. or 10.30 on Sunday, you worship with us. Hopefully we'll be making more announcements about things as we move forward in the future. We just can't get paralyzed by this thing anymore. Uh, God is too good. 
His grace is too amazing. His mercy is too infinite. And we got to tell the world about what Jesus has done for us. So you think about those things as we prepare to worship this Lord's Day. And don't forget before you go, you know God loves you. And you know I love you. And there's not a thing you can do about it. God bless you. Have a great Wednesday evening. Look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday. And let's just see what God's going to do in the days ahead. God bless. Have a great night.